Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is the best MEDC, and originally today I was going to talk about the comparisons or differences, the contrasts between a $15 knife and a $1,000 knife, but the more I thought about it, especially with these two knives in particular, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Like this is not a good $15 knife, and this is an exceptional $1,100 knife. So doesn't make sense. So instead, I'm actually going to talk to you about why you should not buy a clone, a very cheap clone of the Grail knife that you want. There are many reasons, so I'm going to list those out, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to do a one-to-one -one comparison between this knife and its clone and another knife that it's very, very similar to, and uh, show you really hands-on why you should not buy a cheap clone of the knife you really want. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. So one of the first reasons you may consider buying a clone instead of your actual grail is because you feel like your grail is out of reach, either short term or long term, you cannot buy your grail right now. And it would make logical sense that something like your grail would be almost as good, but that's simply not gonna be the case in most instances. I would say almost never is the clone gonna be as good as the real deal. Unlike a fake Rolex, Rolexes have been copied to no end tirelessly, relentlessly, and to a remarkable degree. There are fake Rolexes that just look, act, and breathe like the real deal, and you'd be really hard pressed to tell the difference unless you're trained in that sometimes. Uh, some of those are just so good, but when it comes to knives, that's not always the case. And, and there is a stark difference here. Fake Rolex is branded as a Rolex. This is not a fake Shirogorov. You may notice there is no branding on this knife whatsoever. So really it's just kind of a clone, right? It's not being sold as a Shirogorov. It's being sold as an Effingro, Effingro, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, that's the company that makes these and they're known for making cheap clones and I would not recommend buying from them. And one of the reasons for that is because really where the similarity is between the real deal and the knockoff or clone end are where they look. Uh, this is lipstick on a pig and very, very, very ugly lipstick at that. And that's really, again, where the similarities end. The fit and finish, the quality, everything else about this knife is nothing like the original. This is near perfection. This thing is really, really, really good. One of the best knives I have ever handled. And once you cross a certain threshold with higher end knives, it doesn't have to be extremely expensive, but there is a certain threshold that I would say it moves for everybody. There's a certain quality about knives, a je ne sais quoi, that you really can't put to words, right? It's, it's just something about them that you have to hold it and touch it and feel it to, to understand exactly what I mean. I cannot put to words why I like this knife so much. It's just nearly impossible to explain without just handing you the knife. Uh, and that's true for a number of knives I have in my collection, like this Herman, which is, I would say, nearly the same quality. The other Shirogorov that I own, or even the Grimsmo Norseman that I've been carrying this month for the challenge, there's just something about these knives uh, that, that truly set them apart from most other knives out there. And when it comes to the fakes or the clones, uh, they, they're never gonna have that because they are inherently just cheap copies. That's not to say that there aren't some higher end clones that are being made. There are especially some for say the Norsemen that uh, they come close. They, they put a lot of time and effort into cloning those knives. But in order to get your hands on one of those really high end fakes or copies, you're gonna have to put some skin in the game, serious skin in the game, and you're spending two or three hundred dollars for something that's still really not the real deal, and I don't know because I've never handled one, probably isn't the same thing. The second reason I would not recommend buying a clone is personal satisfaction, right? You're really buying the knife for you. It's a reward for you, it's a grail. And as I mentioned in the video I made on grails, a grail is something that you have to work towards, strive towards, it's something that you need to challenge yourself to get to, you may never, attain it. And when you take a shortcut, like buying a clone, you're not getting the payoff that you deserve. And the end product is not what you were expecting. And it's not ever going to have the same sort of satisfaction as the real deal. And on the flip side of it, it may even make getting the real deal 
less impactful than if you had just waited and got the right one to begin with. The third reason is many people have hesitation about buying their grail because a grail inherently is something that's probably pretty expensive, not always, but my guess is this going to be one of the more expensive knife purchases you've ever made. And that is a little scary sometimes. And it's easy to feel like if you get it and don't like it, that you're stuck with it or that you're out, you know, however much that knife costs, but that's not true at all. There's a very healthy secondary market for most knives out there in blade forms or on Reddit as knife swap and EDC exchange. And then there's also my discord server where there's a classified section. You can buy and sell used knives. And that comes with two benefits when you're looking to buy a grail. First being that you can possibly find it at secondary prices, which for many of these knives is gonna be lower than the retail value, which is great for you. You can get it for less than retail value. On the flip side of that, if you buy it and you don't like it, you can sell it again. And if you haven't absolutely thrashed the blade in the time that you've had it and decided you didn't like it, you can get most, if not all of your money back. Some of these knives maintain their value really, really well, some not so much, but it's important to just do the research, check secondary prices, and if you wanna buy one at MSRP at retail, buy one new, that's totally fine, but you can go into it knowing what you can get out of it if you don't like the knife. The fourth reason is that clones come at the detriment to the original creator. And I know a lot of people do not believe that. They say that if I'm buying a clone, I wouldn't buy the original to begin with, and I don't buy that for a second. I feel like it cheapens the value of the real deal, and it keeps more people from buying the real thing and supporting the original creator than it would if they didn't exist. The clones are a detriment to everybody except for the person making the clones, because the person who's buying the clone is not getting the real deal. They're being sold on you know, the shape and design of the original without the benefit of having the true craftsmanship and supporting the original maker. So the only person that really benefits from these clones being made, it's padding the pockets of the people making the clones and that's it. And I can't support that. I rightfully cannot support that. The last reason I would not recommend buying a clone is because there are so many great knives out there. And I get it, you're probably fixated on that one design, but I'd be willing to bet that there's something out there that's similar enough to fill that void for a while without getting the original or a clone. So for example, this is the Shirogorov Neon Zero, one of my absolute favorite knives in my collection. This is that cheap knockoff that I was talking about, and it's really kind of the middle ground between these. I will do a comparison of all this here in a minute, but this is a $700 knife this is a $15, well, 16, I think is what I actually paid. Uh, it's no longer available, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this. You can't buy that. Uh, <laughs> but this, with a little bit of food on the blade, is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. Uh, this is a $90 knife. So we're getting very, very similar profiles, very similar carry, blade shapes, very similar. You're getting a different cutting edge, and this one's a liner, this one's a frame lock, but the point remains, this is so similar that I think it would fill the void for the Shirogorov until if you ever wanted to buy it, until you could buy it. Uh, I think it's just, there, there are so many options out there that are so similar that you don't need to be so fixated on getting one right now. You can, you can bounce around and try some different things in the meantime while you save up for your grail. Uh, and here's another one. This, the blade shape's a little different because this one has a very, very big swedge on it, um, but again, Similar knife, flipper, frame lock, on bearings, deep carry pocket clip from Wee Knife, very high quality and much cheaper than the Neon Zero. So all I'm saying is that there are a lot of options that you can get that are much cheaper and I think you're better off getting something from a reputable company like Ferrum Forge or Wee Knife or even Civivi or, or something in that realm, Honey Badger, QSP, than getting a cheap knockoff of your Grail. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's talk about this little knockoff. Uh, there are many knockoffs from this same company. Um, they copy Sabinza's and so many other knives. It is egregious how many knives they copy. I think most, if not all of their designs are pretty much straight rips from other companies, but they do it poorly. Uh, there might be some that are passable, but 
they do it very, very poorly. You can tell in almost every single aspect of this knife. So this one, I would say that it's probably a closer copy to the Shirogorov F3 because that one's a liner lock, but it's got even some differences from that one. So it's a blend of like all these different Shirogorov knives into one. So it's the size of the Neon Zero, 7.6 inch overall length on both of these but it gets a different blade shape. It's got a different grind, like it's a flat grind, but it's got this weird saber grind to it. Uh, obviously it looks a little bit like the long lost cousin to both of these, uh, but everything about it is worse, right? So it's got the same jimping, but every edge on this knife is sharp. There's no milling, no chamfering. Uh, it, this flipper tab is extremely sharp on all edges. Look at this. They tried to add a lanyard loop like they do here on the Neon Zero. So the backspacer has a lanyard loop. They did it here and there's cutouts for the lanyard loop in the metal, but not for the plastic. So if you wanna put a lanyard on this, you have to take the knife apart, put the lanyard through and then put it back together. And here's the best part. They copied the, the proprietary screws from Shirogorov, which is absolutely the worst part about the sugar of knives is the proprietary screws but they copied that part they made sure to copy that the worst part of them look at the blade centering you see that <laughs> you can keep tightening this thing and it will just keep coming loose uh, i've been tightening it all day i've just been flicking this thing open because it is so hilariously bad so look at this one of the best things about these sugar is the action they they just fly open and shut so smooth that one a little less so than this one the F95 is pure perfection. Uh, this one, the only reason it doesn't is because you can't get your thumb out of the way and fast enough. But this, wait for it. <laughs> wait for it. You can really try hard and get it to fly open, but you hear that? It's really bad. Get it close to the mic. It is really, really bad. It's like bone dry. Is, do I have any lube in here? All right, here is some KPL. Let's see if we can make this thing not sound like sandpaper. Look at that, it's immediately better. But that's how it ships. No lube whatsoever. It's immediately better. I've never had a knife ship so bone dry in my life. Uh, but you can just tell in every little detail how much sharper the lines are here in this plunge line. This looks just like they've done it very cheaply, very quickly. The the edge that they put on it is variable. It, it's not the same angle throughout this. You can just see like when you twist it in the light, you can see the tip, it just rolls over. Every little detail about this, they've missed the mark on, which is the polar opposite to a Shirogorov knife. Every detail on this knife is fine tuned and damn near perfect when it leaves the factory in Russia. This is the total opposite. It is copied, like copy paste in CAD and send it. <laughs> and that's how they're made. That's how all of these knives are made. And that, if you enjoy that, if you want something cheap that looks good or decent, this color is horrendous, but uh, you know, by all means you do you, uh, they're gonna continue to exist and people are gonna continue to buy them, but I will not ever uh, condone the purchase or sale of, of clones knockoffs or anything. I think it's it's awful. It's terrible. I mean, just look at this. So they tried to copy like the general shape of the clip, but this is literally the cheapest they could make that clip. There, there is not a cheaper way to make a pocket clip on a knife. This is stamped steel that has been slightly bent, two holes drilled in it. Boom, clip done. That is the laziest, cheapest clip that you could possibly think of. Every little detail about this is a cost saving tactic. And uh, they're just trying to profit off the popularity of Shirogorov's knives and designs because these are really good knives. And granted, not everybody wants to spend 700 or $1,100 on a knife. I get it. But really, when it comes down to it, just buy something from another maker that's doing something similar, but isn't just totally ripping off someone else's style. That's all I'm saying. Clones are disgusting. This is just somebody else making a really good knife that has a lot of similarities, but they don't even look all that much alike. They're, they're different. They're, they're different designs, but they serve the same purpose. So that's all for now. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I'm gonna do another video comparing 
say a $50 knife and a $500 knife and, and maybe make a few different comparison videos like that to show you the differences a little closer. This is hard to compare to a Shorgrav because it is such a cheap clone and copy that the comparisons are really hard to make other than it looking the same. I'm not gonna link that knife down below, but what I'm carrying and other links and important things are in the description. If you click through and purchase anything using those links, it will help support what I'm doing here. Uh, but that's all for now. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.